What's going on, Jerome's? Your Minnesota Fighting Vikings general manager, Kwesi Dofamensa, head coach Kevin O'Connell. They drafted Jaron Hall in the fifth round to potentially be that guy moving forward because, I mean, hey, fifth round picks can take over in year two. I mean, look at slinging Sam Howell in Washington. Woo! right man uh but jaron hall the pride of byu has a live arm he's a little bit older a little bit more mature a great leader of men and he's had some moments uh whether it, uh, at, it be at otas or training camp he has had some nice throws he has had some mistakes he's been a rookie right and throughout the two first two preseason games He's basically been running for his life, and the the lack of depth along the Vikings' second and third team offensive line, Hall working exclusively with the third team, is pretty concerning. And the, the whole thing about it is that you haven't gotten a clear picture of what Jaron Hall can do, because every single time he's moved off the spot, every single time he's under duress, and no young quarterback who's trying to find his footing in the NFL is going to succeed. Uh, like that. And Jaron Hall, I mean, his stats have been rather pedestrian through the first two preseason games. He's completing less than 50% of his passes, but also he's been pressured on 12 of his 26 dropbacks, uh, which is 46.2%, which if that qualified for last year, it would be numero uno in the NFL. Justin Fields was the number one pressure quarterback last year at 45.7. So the fact that Jaron Hall is getting heat on basically half of his dropbacks you you have zero clue what this kid can actually do if he's given protection, if he's given time, and gi- given time to marinate. Like it's basically it's, it's like David Carr uh, when he was the number one overall pick by the Texans back in two thousand two, and then he set the league record for sacks. I, I think two out of his first three seasons. You, you were never going to get a clear picture of what uh, he is capable of, and I think the fact that you know some fans are writing already writing off Jaron Hall, we haven't even seen what he can do. So I suggest that the Vikings. Who knows what they're going to do with the starters in the final preseason game? Uh, I would be all for sitting, say, Kirk Cousins, uh, obviously Justin Jefferson, obviously guys like Daniel Hunter and Harrison Smith. But if you wanted to get the first team offensive line a little bit of run, I would not put Nick Mullins out there. You already know what you're going to get with him as quarterback, too. Put Jaron Hall out there in the first half behind the first-team offensive line uh, and let him cook and then see uh, what what, uh, he can chef up in the kitchen, man. So, uh, again, if you want to play Derrissaw, sure. I would – actually, no, screw it. Don't play Derrissaw. Uh, you can put in Vidarian low. He's had some ups and downs, uh, but if you want him to be the backup left tackle going forward, he's going to have to have some of this high end experience. But I would play the trio of interior offensive linemen: Ezra, Bradbury, and Ed Ingram. Where are are they the weak point on the offensive line? Yes. Could they use a little bit more work in a game situation? Yes. Um, and also, w- would they be able to outclass Arizona? potentially uh, if they play their ones or not uh, I think it would be good practice as well as you know Brian O'Neill come back from that Achilles do you want to get him some action he's been uh, operating as normal in practice as the last couple of weeks I would lean towards shelving him so potentially your offensive line could be Vidarian low and Ole Udo at tackles which is ironic because Ole Udo has one been, has been one of the main offenders uh, of a porous offensive line play for the, through the first two preseason games which is odd since Udo played uh, rather well in place of O'Neal towards the end of last season. But if you want to go left to right, Vidarian Low, Ezra, Bradbury, Ingram, and then Ole Udo, I think that you would get a much better uh, look at what Jaron Hall could do if he's actually given time to go through his pro- progressions, get past the first read before he has to, uh, before he has to take off. And there has been a couple of throws where it, it really opens your eyes, and Jaron Hall's like, Hmm, a little bit where you know that throw against the Titans where he had to move off the spot, shifted to his left, and dropped a dime to Thayer Thomas, which Thomas didn't come up with uh, in between two defenders on third and forever. I mean, throws like that, it, it does give you a little something, something. Uh, but this is going to be the last chance for romance for Jaron Hall because this is going to be the last chance knocking on all the wood that he plays significant snaps in a game situation this year. Obviously, hopefully he doesn't play during the regular season or in the playoffs. But uh, I think that if you want to get give the kid a fair shot, you know, get him some decent protection, Uh, get him a spot where it's going to be like in a game situation where he's not behind guys that are barely going to make the practice squad or guys are going to be working uh, at Home Depot or lows uh, in the next couple weeks. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but they're not NFL caliber offensive linemen. So I'd say start Jaron Hall behind a modified first-team offensive line and see what he can do and go from there, man.
go from there. But your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Jaron Hall should play with the first-team offensive line. Eh, some of them. Maybe not the tackles. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.